Hello everyone, this is part 3 of section 15.3 and it's the uh, continuation of um, double integrals by polar coordinates and we were halfway through an example last time so this was the integral from 1 to 2 that's where that ranged from um, y ranged from 0 to the square root of 2x minus x squared so we wrote that down here and then we started, um, we had to convert the function, so we had to graph the region, so we converted this function to um, something that's identifiable, but completing the square was required. And so we saw it was a circle with the center of 0, 1, and a radius of 1. So that was this um, portion of the graph here. And so then we also had to account for the integrand, and it's 1 over... Uh, x squared plus y squared as a quantity squared so we replaced x squared plus y squared by r squared and then as a quantity squared gives us not r to the fourth I'm sorry one over r to the fourth I didn't catch that last time <clears throat> um, but it is correct actually when I made my substitution down here as we'll get to in a moment so I'll fix that part um, but then we had to get the graphs in terms of polar coordinates. So that same graph, that circular part, we um, changed it to polar coordinates. So we squared both sides, brought everything to one side, recognized that x squared plus y squared is r squared, and that x is our cosine of theta by our transformation, by our uh, conversion formulas. And we were able to show that r is 2 cosine of theta. So that would be the circular part in terms of polar coordinates. And then we also had to account for the fact that x is going from 1 to 2. So it's only the shaded region we're looking for. So we have to get this as the basically the, the left-hand function or the lower function, r1, um, for the re, uh, limits of integration for r. So if x is equal to 1, we again use our cosine theta. Uh, for x, and that's 1, so r would be 1 over cosine theta or secant theta. So then when we set up our integral, it was from, okay, the 1 over r to the 4th was the integrand, the r dr d theta come from, came from the dA, and then the r ranged from the line, which is r equaling secant of theta, to the circular part, which is r is 2 cosine of theta. And then our angle went from 0 to all the way up to this point here. And the way we realize that that's pi over 4 is just simply that if this is y is 1 here and x is 1, then that's 45 degrees. So therefore, pi over 4. So finally, we got the integral set up. And now it's just a matter of doing the calculus or the integration. So hard part. I probably won't give you one this involved, but um, you'll see something, you know, in the homework that's challenging. So, um, similar to this. Okay, before we integrate, um, do a few things here, algebraically. Uh, right, this is 1 over r cubed, dr d theta, just canceling one factor of r. Then we've got a power in the denominator, so in order to integrate that, recopy the limits of integration. We'll write it as r to the negative third, and dr d theta. Okay, so now integrating at the integral from 0 by over 4, that becomes r to the negative 2 divided by negative 2, evaluated as r goes from secant of theta to 2 cosine theta, then that's with respect to theta. So I'm taking it kind of slowly here, 0 to pi over 4, and then we've got, let's write this as uh, negative 1 over 2r squared as r goes from secant theta to 2 cosine theta 
Okay, now the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, upper limit goes in. Get the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of negative. Okay, so let's do this. Negative 1 over 2 upper limit. 2 cosine theta. That has to be squared. Then minus lower limit. So minus, minus 1 over 2. And then secant theta. It has to be squared. And that's all. Uh, with respect to theta and then we get the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of okay, this would be minus 1 over 8 cosine squared theta this would be plus 1 over 2 secant squared theta and that's all with respect to theta Okay, and then you think you're having fun yet, wait to see what happens here. We get, uh, upon the identities, 1 over cosine is secant. So the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of negative 1 eighth secant squared theta. And then plus 1 half. And then 1 over secant is cosine, so that's cosine squared theta. And this is all with respect to theta. Okay, and secant squared theta is not a problem. That's just going to integrate to be tangent. But here's the fun I was talking about, cosine squared. So to integrate cosine squared, you might recall from calculus 2, that's our double angle power reducing the formula because you've got an even power of sine or cosine and the identity was cosine squared theta is one half times one plus cosine of two theta we also had an identity we don't need it here but I might as well state it for sine squared and it was just one half times one minus cosine two theta Okay, so now we got to replace cosine squared by that. We've got the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Let me wait on the integrations. Negative 1 eighth secant squared theta plus 1 half times the identity. 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. And that's all with respect to theta. So, that gives us, let's see, um, just take one more step and then we'll integrate. 0 pi over 4, because negative 1 eighth secant squared theta plus 1 quarter um, plus 1 quarter cosine 2 theta all with respect to theta so finally we can integrate get negative 1 eighth tangent theta plus 1 quarter theta okay cosine 2 theta integrates to be 1 half sine of 2 theta so 1 eighth sine of 2 theta is evaluated from 0 to pi over 4 and upper limit goes in so negative 1 eighth tangent pi over 4 plus 1 quarter pi over 4 plus 1 eighth sine of 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2 and then minus a minus one eighth tangent of zero, because now lower limit's going in, plus one quarter times zero, and then plus one eighth times the sine of zero. And now, finally, we can evaluate these things. Um, 
tangent of pi over 4 is tangent of 45 degrees, which is 1. So negative 1 eighth times 1. And then we've got plus pi over 16. And then sine of pi over 2, so plus 1 eighth. Then the sine of pi over 2 is the sine of 90, which is 1. And then we get minus, so all of that, minus, and then here we have tangent of 0 is 0, so minus 1 eighth times 0, 1 quarter times 0 is just 0, I'll rewrite it, and sine of 0 is 0. So all that goes to 0, these 1 eighths cancel. Then we get pi over 16. Okay, so quite the formidable problem. Um, all right, so final two examples will be a little bit easier. And for the first one, we have a double integral there. And we're going from 0 to radical 2 over 2 and then so x is ranging from 0 to radical 2 over 2 and y is ranging uh, from x to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now the integrand, x squared plus y squared, that's a nice easy one. That's just going to be r squared. The dy dx is our dA. And remember the dA is our dr d theta. Okay, but taking care of this, we've got y equaling x as one of the um, so this implies y equals x is one of the graphs, and that y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Actually, let me go underneath with that, so I'll put the graph off to the right. And y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared is the other. All right, this we've seen before. We'll square both sides. y squared is 1 minus x squared. x squared plus y squared is 1. It's got a circle with the centers of the origin and a radius of 1. So let's see what our graphs look like. Got to put them into polar coordinates, though, remember. Um, but definitely circle, center is the origin. Radius of 1, so negative 1. 1, 1, and so top half of the circle against the top half because it's a positive version. Uh, we've got y equals x as the other, so that bisects the first and third quadrant, so that's y equaling x. Okay, these are the radial lines, 0, pi over 2, pi. Okay, but we're between um, 0 and um, this top half of the graph. This value, this line, so between the line and the top half, from 0 to this point right here is, in fact, um, radical 2 over 2. Because that's at 45 degrees, okay? So that's the um, or pi over four. So that's that um, radial line. Okay. So now setting up the integral. So, but before we do, we have to consider 
the um, fact that we're going in the um, so we got the double integral and it's going to be r squared times the r dr d theta because okay, so we know all that for sure um, the r is going to range from looks like zero um, to the graph of the curve and the graph of the curve is just r equaling one because this is r squared equaling one so r equals one is the curve the line y equaling x gives us so we're going from zero to one in terms of r and the line y equaling x um, gives us the initial because if we're going to make little sweeps, right, these little d theta sweeps that we've been talking about, that's going to be 45 degrees or pi over 4 as our lower limit of integration to the upper limit of pi over 2. So this angular sweep in here. Okay, so that's the integral. And now we'll evaluate it. So the integral pi over 4 to pi over 2. Okay, rewrite integral 0 to 1. Just multiply the r squared and the r to get r cubed. dr d theta. Okay, so from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Let me say one fourth r to the fourth evaluated as r goes from zero to one with respect to theta. Well, that works out pretty, doesn't it? Because now we just get <coughs> let's bring the one fourth out in front, and we've got the integral from pi over four to pi over two. If a one goes in, that's just one to the fourth or one. If a zero goes in, that's zero to the fourth or zero. Look at that, just one fourth integral of one with respect to theta. So that's one quarter theta. Evaluated from pi over four to pi over two. So fundamental theorem of calculus. And we get one fourth pi over two upper limit minus one fourth pi over four lower limit. So that's pi over eight minus pi over sixteen, um, which is, is two pi over sixteen minus one pi over sixteen, or pi over sixteen. Oops, sorry. Okay. All right, so again, the setup is a crucial part. That's what's a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, here's one final example. This is just kind of a cute example. Um, when it, we're going to find each region using polar coordinates. And here's the figure. It's just going to be a circle. With um, a radius of, let me see what I want to use here. Radius of two. So a circle with a radius of two units. So negative two here, two, negative two, or positive two there, I'm sorry. Positive x direction. And this would be negative two. So just a circle. Although mine didn't look too circular-like, but I think we're good. I'm going to label this region 1, this region 2, and then I want this bottom region to be region 3, to the bottom half. So for region 1, 
we just think of taking these little sweeps and the graph of the equation is just simply r equaling 2 and so we've got the double integral over the region with respect to the area which would be the integral of r dr d theta and for region 1 r is ranging from 0 to 2 so from the origin to one of the points on the graph and then we're sweeping through this angle from 0 to pi over 2 Okay, so nice and simple, integral 0 by over 2, we get 1 half r squared, as r goes from 0 to 2, and back to theta, and that gives us, um, the 2 goes in first, so we got the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the 2 goes in for r, we get 4 times 1 half is 2. And then if a 0 goes in for r, we get 0. So 2 d theta, which would be 2 theta. Evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And that would be 2 times pi over 2 minus 2 times 0, which is just pi. Now similarly, for region 2, the double integral r dr d theta but now we're still going from 0 to 2 in terms of r but now we're going from pi over 2 so now we want this angle in here so from pi over 2 to pi okay so initially we get the same thing Um, that is one half r squared evaluated from zero r equaling zero r equaling pi over two or excuse me r equaling two and that gives us uh, two again pi over 2 to pi gives us 2 again because 2 squared is 4 times 1 half is 2 put in a 0 we get 0 so 2 d theta so 2 theta from pi over 2 to pi would be 2 times pi minus 2 times pi over 2 so that's 2 pi minus 1 pi or pi again and then finally for the third region, the double integral. Okay, it's still 0 to 2 because it's all we're sweeping through is this little piece. But now the angle is this whole angle. So from pi to 2 pi. And it's of the same thing, r dr d theta. And so, starts out the same way. Get one half r squared. R goes from zero to two. That's just two again. So the integral from pi to two pi of um, two d theta. So that's just 2 theta evaluated from pi to 2 pi. And so that gives us 2 times 2 pi minus 2 times pi, or 4 pi minus 2 pi is 2 pi. Now the cool thing about this is that our three answers were pi pi 
and 2 pi. And we know this is just a circle with a radius of 2. And we know geometrically that area is pi r squared. So for our area, the total area should be pi times 2 squared or 4 pi. And that's basically what we found. And it makes sense that region 1 and region 2 were both pi and pi because the top half is half of 4 pi, which is 2 pi, and the bottom half was 2 pi as well. So kind of a neat um, example to finish off with there and to practice how to set up the coordinates. Okay, so that's the end of 15.3. So we'll see you next time.